51 completed guns is all it takes to unlock Orion. It doesn't matter what guns they are, you are still able to make progression towards this mastery camo. If you're patient and wait for DLC guns to be added to the game, you are going to be able to skip out on completing weapons you aren't willing to grind. This means you are currently able to bypass the launcher grind. If this or any other major changes happen with the grind, a pinned comment will have all the updates. Here is the basics on how the Orion grind works. Each weapon has base challenges. Once you unlock all the base camos, you will be able to complete gold. After gold has been completed on every gun in a single weapon category, you will be able to grind platinum. Once platinum has been completed on 51 unique weapons, you will be able to grind polyatomic. Once polyatomic has been unlocked on another 51 unique weapons, the Orion camo will be unlocked for every gun within the game. There is a new system called receivers this year, where a base gun will have variants. To unlock each variant, you must level up each gun depending on how the branch is designed. If leveling up seems too tedious, you are able to skip this process by playing DMZ. Within the DMZ game mode, you are able to loot a variety of weapons by looting enemies, stashes, and in-game events. As long as you don't previously own a weapon and have it on your inventory when you exfil, you will permanently unlock it. You can also have a teammate drop any weapon in order for you to unlock them as well. This even counts with DLC and Battle Pass weapons. If you give a friend a weapon to unlock within DMZ, and it is an insured weapon, you will have to wait 2 hours to gift another one. While it is efficient to use this DMZ method, you will have to level up weapons in order to complete camo challenges, which means you will unlock weapons within a weapon family naturally throughout the grind. You don't have to go out of your way if you don't want to. When grinding a specific category of weapons, Sometimes you will have to unlock other variants of weapons within a separate category before you're able to make any progression. A simple example is the snipers. If you would like to use the XPX-80, you will need to level up the SPR-208, SAB-50, and LAB-330 before you can make any progression on the SPX. This is one scenario using the DMZ method is beneficial. A majority of this grind is reliant on leveling up weapons. The fastest way to acquire weapon XP is to take advantage of double weapon XP tokens or double weapon XP events using the following method. Farming kills an invasion. Through a match, there will be enemy helicopters that will drop off enemy AI behind the enemy spawn points. Use tactical insertions to ensure even if you do die by bots or players, you will respawn where you need to. The bots spawn in a vulnerable state where they become free and easy kills. Each helicopter will drop 6 to 8 bots, and if you are able to kill all of them, you will acquire enough XP to level up a weapon once per helicopter as long as you have double weapon XP active. Normally, every two helicopters will result within one weapon level. Each helicopter also spawns within 30 seconds resulting in a steady stream of XP. The best maps to take advantage of this is Seraf Bay, Santa Sena, and Guijaro. While you are able to do this on any invasion maps, the larger maps allow you to get around the enemy without being detected, and the enemies will spawn farther away from player spawns. In 6v6, the fastest ways to level up include the game mode Hardpoint and smaller maps. Equip the perks Extra Tactical, Restock, and Overclock while using Decoy Grenades and the DDoS Field Upgrade. Throw the Decoy Grenades by the enemies and each kill that your team gets, the distracted enemy XP will count towards your weapon. Using DDoS around enemies will also count towards your weapon. For even more XP, put a riot shield on your back, and all damage absorbed will also count. By doing this on top of getting kills and playing the objective, you are going to exponentially increase the amount of XP you acquire. You are also able to do this exact same strategy while playing Kill Confirmed. Instead of playing an objective, collect as many dog tags as possible. Playing in DMZ and completing objectives will also level up your weapons decently fast. I didn't find it as efficient as multiplayer, but if you need a break and want to play with your friends, DMZ is a nice change of pace. When it comes to working on camo challenges, there's game modes and maps that are more important to grind. With Season 1, we were introduced to Shoot House, an amazing 24-7 playlist to complete every camo challenge there is. Even launcher and melees can be completed with ease. This map returns from Modern Warfare 2019, 
where it was a staple of the Damascus Camel Grind. Shipment will also be returning within Season 1, adding another map that will make camos increasingly easier to grind. Outside of Shoot the Ship styled playlists, the best game modes are Hardpoint, Domination, and Headquarters. These fast paced game modes paired with smaller maps are extremely fun to play and allow for fast camo progression. Playing in the tier 1 playlist will make grinding some of the weaker guns in the game much easier. Player health is all the way to 30, meaning the majority of weapons will one-shot kill at all ranges. Melees are a one-hit kill, even including the riot shield within this game mode. I've been asked multiple times, what's the best order to complete the categories? There is no right answer. My preference is to complete the hardest weapons first. That way at the end of the grind, I'm not left trying to complete anything difficult. The exact order I worked in from start to finish this year is melees, launchers, snipers, marksman rifles, battle rifles, pistols, shotguns, ARs, LMGs, and lastly, SMGs. Many players find different weapon categories difficult, and if you're starting with the hardest weapons and getting frustrated while grinding, it helps to take a break from what you're grinding and maybe complete one or two guns that you find enjoyable to use. Remember from earlier, you will have to jump from category to category in order to unlock specific weapons, which does add some much needed variation within the grind. When it comes to the order of what's the best to do, I highly recommend getting the hardest stuff done first, but it's really up to your personal preference. We will start with the two categories majority of players struggle with, those being launchers and melees. Each weapon contains only a single base camo challenge, which is getting kills. And unfortunately, you must reach level 11 on each weapon in order to access that camo challenge. Once you are able to grind that single camo challenge, all you have to do is get kills. It's honestly that simple. Killing enemies with rocket explosions or by meleeing them with your launcher will all count. I tried the method of holding your launcher while getting melee kills with a throwing knife to test if that one hit kill method would count, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to work for me. And that's it. Once finished with your base kills, you'll need to unlock gold. For launchers, you'll have to get two kills within a single life five times. It seems really easy because it is, and these do stack so in any case where a joker or any other launcher gets a quad kill, you will make two progressions right then and there. You are using launchers, so keep in mind you won't be able to instantly finish these and you will end up dying lots. Once you've completed gold on every launcher, you can progress with the platinum challenge. All you have to do is destroy enemy streaks, vehicles, as long as they're actively being driven, or enemy equipment. Using the spotter perk is crucial with completing this challenge. It will allow you to see enemy objects through walls, making them easy to spot. With the Pila and Joker, you are able to lock onto enemy objects. With how frequently UAVs and other streaks are called in, you should not have any issues with these two. On the off chance you are struggling, play Ground War, stay at your team's home spawn, and wait for enemies to call in any UAVs for easy destructions. Take advantage of ammo crates and ammo boxes to refill your ammo reserve, and when it comes to the RPG in Strela, you will mainly need to focus on enemy-driven vehicles and equipment. Neither of these launchers can lock onto anything, making them difficult to hit moving streaks. If you have the opportunity to destroy stationary counter UAVs, VTOLs, sentry guns, or the odd UAV, of course do so. Unfortunately, field upgrades do not count. When you progress towards your polyatomic challenges, you will have to get double kills, which is two kills within under three seconds. That includes two kills with a single rocket, a kill with a rocket paired with a melee kill, or two back-to-back -back melee kills, as long as they're within that three-second time frame. Hardpoint is the best mode by far to complete this outside of the shoot the ship, since there are players that are funneled into close quarters areas to a single point on the entire map. Melee challenges are straightforward. After reaching level 11, your only challenge is to acquire kills. Using tacticals like smoke, flash, or stun grenades will help disorient enemies, making them easier to kill. The perks Double Time and Tracker are a must for an increase in movement speed and the ability to see where enemies are moving. 
Once your base kills have been completed, you have to unlock gold with the knife and shield. You can do this by killing two enemies in a single life 10 times. Prepare to die lots, especially while playing on smaller maps. Your platinum challenge is to get two kills within 10 seconds 10 times. This is a simple double kill challenge where you're given an easy out by an increase in time to 10 seconds. In between kills, you are able to die and respawn and they will still count as long as it's still within that 10 second time frame. The final polyatomic challenge is getting kills from behind, also known as backstabbers. The shield needs 10 while the knife needs 20. An easy challenge requiring low numbers. With the shield, you can complete this in one game, since lots of players once initially hit by your shield will try and run away from you and, in turn, face their backs towards you. You have to be more opportunistic with the knife and create situations where you're stabbing the enemies in the back. This can be done by sneaking up on enemies, using tacticals to disorient them, or using dead silence to draw no attention to yourself while rushing through spawns. Each bullet firing weapon has four simple challenges. Most of them can be completed just through playing the game, while others need a bit more focus. Here are all base challenges and the best ways to complete them. The first challenge, all weapons in the game share and require no extra effort, kills. You don't need to do anything special or extraordinary other than kill your enemy. These next two kill challenges become a little bit more specific but are still extremely easy. Getting kills with a suppressor attachment equipped. There is no specific suppressor required in order to complete this as long as you have one equipped on your weapon. Sometimes certain weapons won't have any suppressor to unlock and will require you to level up a separate gun with a compatible suppressor in order to make progress with this challenge. Killing an enemy from behind requires you to kill an enemy by shooting them in the back. Only a few weapons share this challenge making it something that isn't tedious. Killing enemies from behind will happen without you even noticing, but once you're focused on this challenge, it seems like it never happens. Since most gunfights happen face to face, playing a game mode like Ground War or Invasion will allow you to get behind enemy spawn points. This will make it easier where the enemies will always have their backs turned to you, and as long as you stay undetected, you should be smooth sailing. Getting kills while aiming down sight is as simple as that. Aim. If you're using a weapon that has a slower ADS time, resort to using attachments to increase it. Sometimes you will be getting hip fire kills where you're in between holding your gun at your hip and aiming down sight and these won't count. The overwhelming majority of your kills trying to complete this challenge will be aiming down sight anyway, so you should not worry. When it comes to hip fire kills, you're required not to aim. And it's as simple as that. Most guns that share this challenge are utilized at close range, making kills easy to get without aiming, like shotguns, SMGs and pistols, which have an added level of simplicity. If you use the akimbo weapon attachment, each kill will count as a hip fire. There are a few guns that will struggle with hip fires, LMGs, tack rifles, and snipers. They aren't built to succeed in this area, and you should try to do everything in your power to get as close to the enemy as possible. Why? Because the closer you are, the more accurate you are. Utilize attachments like the laser sight and grips to increase hip fire accuracy. If you are really struggling, head to the third person playlist. Here, hip fire kills are much easier to get, especially on a sniper. Crouch, prone, and mounted kills all require you to enact a specific movement in order to complete them. The fastest way to finish these is to do that specific action until the camo is unlocked. Crouched and laying in prone can be completed anywhere while mounted kills require you to mount on select surfaces. When it comes to mounting kills, some weapons will have bipods that allow you to mount while in prone, which really helps. In extremely rare cases, like the Demo Narrow and SA Side Grip for the RAL, having these attached will count for mounted kills without you having to be mounted at all. You are also able to combine prone or crouch kills while mounted, as long as you match the requirement for each challenge like mounting with the bipod while prone. Point blank kills are specially designed for those close quarter weapons, even though there are some long range weapons that are thrown in that mix as well. 
When it comes to close quarter kills counting, you must be within less than a 1 meter distance between you and your enemy. These will occur naturally on small maps and objective game modes, and sometimes you will have to force yourself to get close to the enemies on your own accord. Flanking behind camping enemies, or waiting for enemies to walk past you, are the simplest ways to complete this challenge. Using tacticals, dead silence, and perks like double time, extra tacticals, and ghost will help you get closer to enemies with the lowest chance of you being detected on your way. There are two challenges that require double kills. The first challenge is double kills itself. This requires you to get two kills rapidly within under three seconds. Double kills are easily achieved just while playing the game. If you tend to struggle with finding a second person or pulling off the double kill, playing on smaller objective based maps will allow for more action, increasing your chances of getting double kills. The second challenge is getting two kills within 10 seconds. This is specifically used for some of the slower firing weapons like snipers. While you will get natural double kills, having the extra 10 seconds to get two kills will make this challenge extremely easy, especially for some of those weaker weapons that some players might struggle using. One-shot kills are a simple challenge with the addition of the Type 1 mode. Each gun that requires this challenge will kill in one shot within that playlist. If you are playing in core, shotguns will one-shot at close ranges, all snipers can one-shot to the upper chest and torso, and the same applies to most marksman rifles. However, when it comes to the LMS, the only way in core to earn one-shots is by shooting the head. If you're ever struggling in core, utilize that tier 1 mode. The final base challenge is pistol specific, and that's getting kills while using the akimbo attachment. As straightforward as this is, some people will struggle with accuracy. Laser sights to aim will greatly help while playing maps like Shipment and Shoot House. I'm kidding, this is a very easy challenge. As long as you have a Quimbo equipped, you should be able to take advantage of Shipment and Shoot House to complete this challenge as fast as possible. When you are ready to unlock gold, each bullet weapon will share the exact same requirement. Three kills in a single life. These do also stack, so if you get your first three kills, keep going. As long as you stay alive and your kills remain in multiples of three, each three kills you get will count towards your progression. As easy as it is, many people struggle with this. They overthink and panic when they need one more kill. A word of advice, you've already gotten your first two kills, so how hard is getting one, two, or even six more? Sometimes you get stuck using bad weapons and the lobbies turn into CDL matches, and getting kills can genuinely be difficult and even frustrating. Sometimes you have to tough it out and continue grinding until it's done. Think about how many times you have gotten three kills in a single life without even noticing. Once gold has been completed on every weapon in a category, you can grind platinum. Platinum requires you to get long shots with every weapon. On screen, I'll be showing the best long shot spots on each map. Different categories require a different minimum distance for a kill to count as a long shot. As long as you're past the minimum distance, each kill will count. Snipers have a minimum distance of 42 meters. Assault rifles, battle rifles, LMGs, and marksman rifles all share the distance of 38 meters. SMGs have a minimum distance of 30 meters, while shotguns and pistols share a minimum of 12 meters. There is an optic called the X10 Angle 40 that shows the distance between you and your target, making your distance easier to gauge. Increasing recoil control, bullet velocity, and damage range stats will all help, as well as using deployable cover to protect your body and even mount. The best spot in the entire game to complete long shots is the middle lane on Shoot House. It has to be the most popular location since Modern Warfare 2019 to complete this challenge, even for snipers. If Shoot House isn't your cup of tea, or you need a change in scenery, Ground War will make long shots easy with how large and open each map is. The final challenge you will need to do in order to complete the Orion camo is unlock polyatomic on 51 different guns. You can complete this by getting headshots. It's a simple way to finish the grind and it goes without saying, aim for the head. If you end up needing help, 
A tier 1 mode will allow for one-shot headshots on any weapon while using accuracy improving attachments will aid in keeping your gun steady. The more experience you get with getting headshots, the easier they will become. Don't expect every time you aim at the head to get the easy kill. At the beginning, you will miss a lot of your shots if you're untrained. That's the complete Orion Camel Grind. Everything you need to know from start to finish. If there are any questions or concerns, feel free to ask for help or suggestions. Either I or someone else who is grinding camels will be able to help in the comment section. Thankfully, this year, the grind is simple enough to where there should be no confusion regarding any of the challenge. The one thing out of your control is SBMM. Good luck with that.